Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I just want to thank all my old subscribers and welcome my new subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. So this might have been a well thought out canning project in my head, but the execution was not quite what I had expected. So I just finished um, a canning load of chicken and I thought I would bring you along on my next canning project. This is a wall pack chicken and I didn't put any broth or anything in it and as you can see it is an inch head space which is what the recommended is and the liquid is right up to the top so I guess I did something right so I am on a bit of a canning run and I had to make some room in my freezer so I had a ham and I'll insert the picture here of the ham I cut up. And this so this is the ham I got from Oldies just before Thanksgiving. Not the best price, but at the time it was the best I could find. I did find actually another one at Myers, which I got a little cheaper, and that's what we have for Thanksgiving. So I had this extra one. That's what you see here. Out of that ham, I got four pints, and I had to. I had a lot of butter in my fridge, and I wanted to can them up. This one is actually just heated up and shaken, and this one I actually pressure canned. I'm going to use this one first because, just because. Um, I usually don't do this size, but I ran out of the what I call a unicorn size, and this is a three-quarter pint. We put this on our counter, and we can go through this in about a week before it goes off. So that's why I do this size. This one is just a little too big for that purpose. And putting it in and out of the fridge is not as soft and then it breaks up the bread and they complain so um, that's why I don't usually do the pints I try to do the three-quarter pints but anyway back to my canning session and trying to clear um, some room in my freezer I took out that ham and I have a little bit left here this is about I would say three cups maybe that I diced up so since I have that, I am going to make my next canning session. I'm going to do some baked beans, um, Boston baked beans, whatever you want to call them. Every time I go to the grocery store, or in this case, Walmart usually, I pick up an extra rice, pasta, beans, lots and lots of beans. So I have this bag that has quite a bit in it. And then I have this, which is a five gallon bucket and it has great northern beans black beans red beans black eyed peas everything you can imagine all the way down to the bottom and I figured I would do something and this would be my next canning session I have lentils in here red beans more black beans black eyed peas all sorts of things in here so that's what I'm gonna do next I think I found a recipe that calls for Worcestershire sauce but I have some liquid smoke that I got and I saw a recipe for that so I think I'm gonna do two different ways so I found this recipe for baked beans and also Boston style baked beans in the the Amish canning cookbook and I decided I wanted to try this instead of just doing regular beans well I'm gonna do regular beans too but just um, just try something different so we're gonna go with this Boston not the Boston baked beans well sort of a twist on like a combine the two so what I did was I actually um, these are navy beans these are great northern beans I didn't have enough of the navy beans to do this recipe to fill up my canner because I like to run my canner full so I'm gonna do two different ones because I have some liquid smoke yeah me two different kinds why I picked up two different kinds because they had two different kinds this is mesquite and hickory and then I have Worcestershire sauce so that's where this recipe is gonna come in but I'm kind of going to go with this recipe. Use the tomato juice, the brown sugar, the pepper, the mustard, the ham. Um, instead of like this one. for bacon. 
but it does call for Worcestershire sauce. So I'm going to kind of combine the two and we're going to make two different recipes in one. So, well, not in one, but two different ones because I have two different beans to make up enough for to run my canner full. And I'm looking at these because I soaked them overnight. I didn't want to boil them and bake them and all that because some people said they be turned out mushy and I don't want them to be mushy. So what I did was I soaked them overnight. They got about probably about 18, 19 hours soak on them right now. And I figured that should be okay because I do do regular beans, the no soak method, which is the rubble canning method, and they turn out fine. So I figured if I do this and do the soak overnight, rinse them, I did rinse them, I soaked them, and then I rinsed them again this morning before I drained them and getting ready to use them. So hopefully that will work out. We'll see. That's a lot of beans to not work out. But I, I figured, why shouldn't it work out? Because, like I said, I do dry bean canning, so this should work out. So I'm going to use this recipe, well, a combination of the two recipes, and get this going. Things I didn't consider when I decided to double this recipe, well, not quite double this recipe, because this recipe makes, uh, I did offer this recipe, which makes seven quarts. And I wanted 24 pints. What I didn't consider was what pot I'm going to put all this sauce in. I only have one big stock pot, but I guess when I divide it, I could use my next smaller stock pot. And the other thing was how much tomato juice I have left in my canning. And apparently I just have one because last year I didn't do any tomato juice. I did all sauces and stewed tomatoes and diced tomatoes, that sort of stuff. This can is left from 1120 and this is the last jar down there. So I'm improvising here. I have a, and I have a tomato sauce and I just figured I would just use this with some water to make my tomato juice cross my fingers that this works. Hopefully it will work. I'm sure it will because why wouldn't it? So I'm going to start on that and I'll take you a step. So I have the rest of my ingredients ready to go. I have my salt here, my diced up ham, my ground mustard, pepper, molasses, and brown sugar. Okay, so here I have my biggest stock pot and I put six quarts of water in and then I'm going to add in my jar of tomato juice my home can jar of tomato juice, my can of tomato sauce, and then my tomato paste. I'm gonna get that in there as well. Got my tomato juice wannabe all mixed up. That's my six cups of, no, six quarts of water. Um, my tomato juice and the tomato paste and the tomato sauce. So I think it looks like tomato juice. What do you think? Yeah. So I'm just going to get started on the rest of my ingredients in here. Bring it to a boil for three minutes. And then I'm going to separate it in half. And put my Worcestershire sauce in one half. And my liquid smoke in another. So I'm going to get my brown sugar. I measured out. It said two and a half cups. That sounded like a lot to me. So I did... Um, this is loosely packed. I didn't pack it and that is one and a half cups and I'm doing a cup of the molasses Because that's all that's left in the jar and I'll I'm gonna taste it before I um, put the beans in because I want to make sure everything is to to taste that it tastes good before I um, move on to the next step Add the rest of my ingredients I'm going to add my molasses and I am adding a cup of molasses because that's all that's left in this jar I'm going to add all my spices my salt my mustard powder my black pepper everything is going in and do remember I am making um, this should make 
24 pints in total. So I'm doubling, or not quite doubling the recipe um, that I looked up. And I am kind of melding two recipes together. So I'm using a little bit of one and a little bit of another. And hopefully this turns out. I mean, I guess it should. I mean, it. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's just like doing beans, but in a tomato juice instead of hot water. That's the way I'm looking at it anyway. So I'm just going to get this mixed up. I'm going to bring it to a boil for three minutes, and then I'll move on to the next step. Okay, so my tomato juice concoction here is been brought to a boil for three minutes. And I don't know if you can tell, but I added some onion in there. So everything's in except for the liquid smoke or the Worcestershire sauce. So now it's time to start filling up my jars. And I've seen this done two ways. I've seen them put the beans into the broth. That's what I'm going to call it, or liquid, and bring that to a boil. And then I've seen people put it into the jars and put the liquid on top of the, the beans in the jars. And I think that's the way I'm going to do it so I can assure that I have the uh, roughly about the same amount of beans in each um, jar. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a scoop, just use the same scoop I have here, and just scoop it in. And then I'm going to um, split off my liquid, put Worcestershire sauce in one, and liquid smoke in the other. My liquid into two separate pots. I have my liquid smoke here. I've decided to use the hickory one, and I'm going to put that in this one. And then in this other pot, which is the same amount, I section it off equally. I'm going to put Worcestershire sauce. And I'm going to bring this back to a boil. And then I'm going to get my beans into my jars. Okay, so I've got my beans in. They're about halfway full. And I'm going to put ham in half and leave the other half without any ham in it. So that's what it's looking like so far. And I have some beans left. I'm probably going to have extra beans um, left because I did uh, eight cups of each when I pre-soaked them. Um, yeah, so I probably did too many beans. But that's okay. I'll just can them up um, with the hot water and um, just leave them as regular beans. So I'm just finishing up my first 12 jars of the beans, just putting in the broth. Hopefully I can do this one-handed and not spill everything all over the place. Well, I will say I over-guesstimated how much liquid I needed and how much beans I needed. But that's okay, I'll just do a second batch. Sorry, I'm just trying to concentrate and not spill this liquid all over the place. Whoops. So, I have these ones. This is the Worcestershire, the one with Worcestershire sauce in it. And I did some with just the beans. And these down here have the ham in it. So, I'm doing half with um, ham, half without. And then half with liquid smoke and half with Worcestershire sauce. So, yeah, not confusing at all. But this is what it's looking like so far. So it looks like I'm going to have to do a second batch. I was going to use both my canners, my big one and my small batch one. But I think I'll just do two big batches and just be done with it. This batch is done. And as you can see, I had no siphoning. The water is clear. Let me show you what the jars look like. These are my jars. I don't know if you can tell because they're kind of dark. These are the navy bean ones. And they turned out really good. The level of the water is great and everything. These are the great northern beans that I did in the baked bean liquid. And as you can see, the, it is liquids probably about right here. And everything above that, all the beans are kind of on the dry side. These came out fine. The only thing I'm really concerned about is how high these beans are. 
and the water. I guess the bottom ones absorbed more liquid than I thought they would. I mean, I expected all of them to be like this. But, as you can see, these are fine. These ones, not so much. And these ones are good. So, I guess I'll be using these up first. To my second batch, and learning from my first batch, I'm actually going to put less beans in the jar. Put more liquid, especially the Great Northern Beans one that I have. These are what's in the front. And in the back, it's a little more. Um, those are navy beans, what I had left. So I put less of the northern bean, and I want to put more liquid. And a little less of the navy bean, and I want to put more liquid as well. So I'm going to get the second batch done. And this one is the liquid smoke. And it almost smells like barbecue sauce to me. I don't know why, but that's what it smells like to me. But definitely doesn't look like barbecue sauce. So even with all my liquid in my jars, I am making sure I debubble these. You never know with beans and meat how it can trap some air in between them. So I'm just making sure, doubly sure, that there are no air bubbles. And I'm also wiping my rim before I put on my lids and rings and put them into the canner. So it's the next day and my two batches of beans or baked beans are done. And as you can see, the ones on the white towel, they are my second batch. They have a lot more liquid in them and I like them that way. Um, I would rather more liquid than um, them to be dry. So I like this. So I will take what I've learned from these two batches and apply it to my next canning bean session going forward. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. Thank you very much and have a great day. Cornbread. And I'm going to pair that with my homemade chili.